Hello and welcome to another Excel tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about Power Query and specifically on how to create a query that uses parameters from a cell in Excel. There are a couple of ways to do parameters in Power Query, but usually it's in Power Query itself. And if you're going to work with some users or coworkers that aren't that Excel savvy, you really don't want them to be poking around in Power Query and breaking the code. So what you can do is you can create a little user interface straight in Excel that then Power Query can use those values to, um, to parameterize their other queries, okay? It'll make a lot more sense when we get to it. So we're just looking at the data we're going to be messing with right now. The data is just going to be three months of data in a file called Q1 Sales. And basically, you have the name of the customer, the salesperson, the sale amount, and the month. We're going to create two parameters just to show you that the power is not really just creating one parameter, but actually two, three, four, or as many parameters as you want. And so we're going to do a query parameter that will specify the sheet of interest and then of the sheet of interest it'll do the salesperson of interest once again without the parameter you could still do this but you would have to physically change it in the m code in power query and the goal is not to do that but to do it in excel so i'm going to go ahead and minimize this and create a quick query that will give us the data for one spreadsheet and that will be our starting point I'm going to go into data, get data from file, from workbook, and it's going to be Q1 sales, import, let it do its magic. Okay, we'll start with Jan sales. I'm going to transform the data because I need to filter down for one individual. And let's filter down Rachel, Rachel Valdez. She has volunteered. So there are two parameters that we're going to do. Okay, I'm going to go into navigation, Jan sales. If you remember, in the other spreadsheet, every month had its own sheet, and we selected Jan sales. We're going to make this into a parameter, and furthermore, we're going to make Rachel Valdez's name also into a parameter. We are not going to do the following, but I'll show you that it is the exact same steps. If you wanted to change the source, which is a string, this path, you can also make that a parameter. But once you know how to do one, you can do any of them. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close and I am going to load it to just a not only a connection but I want to show you the table it'll be easy to see what's going on existing worksheet I don't care about the data model okay we should be pretty good all right so we have Rachel Valdez for January we're going to create our parameter table so I like to make my parameter tables in another spreadsheet I'm going to call it parameter and I'm going to create a table. The first column will be parameter name. This first column is just for us so that we have labels so we know what the values are. The next column is going to be parameter value. And that's really going to be the value of interest. So the first one will be sheet name and it was Jan space sales and the next one will be a salesperson name and I'm just gonna copy it it was Rachel Valdez copy that one and I'll just paste as values now I'm gonna make this a table so I go to insert make this a table my table certainly has headers and I click on OK I don't really like calling it table two so I'm gonna call it parameter table P 
press enter. Okay, so there's my parameter table. Now, I need a query that will give me this single value. It takes a couple of steps. Go into data from table range. Now that's the exact table that we have. I only need sheet name. So I filter for sheet name and I'm going to right click and remove the other columns. <coughs> Excuse me. But right now what I have is a table with rows and columns, one row, one column. I do not want that. I want the value of that row table intersection. So what you do is you click on the cell, you right click and you drill down. Now this is the actual value. This is the variable name. The query name becomes the variable, but I don't want to call it parameter table because I'm going to have several parameters. So I will call it um, monthly sale value parameter. Um, what am I going to call it? Month parameter. How about we do that? And let's put that lowercase o. Press enter. Cool. Now we have month parameter that is going to assume the value of Jan sales. Now I'm going to show the queries. I'm going to change Jan sales to use month parameter. So go to Jan Sales. I'm going to change the name because it's not really going to be Jan anymore once we start changing it. So I'm just going to call it Sales. And here in Navigation, instead of having Jan Sales, I just highlight, including the quotes, right? I highlight all that guy and I call it Month Parameter. And I press Enter. Nothing changed because we still have Jan. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close it. Keep changes? Absolutely. So there are the 40 rows. Nothing has changed. But now here, I can put Feb sales. Nothing's going to happen until I hit refresh all. So what will happen behind the scenes? is Power Query remembers the dependencies and it analyzes it so it knows that it has to run month parameter first and then it runs sales using the value of month parameter. You don't have to do anything. Power Query remembers. So click on refresh sales, refresh all, sorry. And if I go to sheet one, now we have February. So we, we can change the month of interest, right, which is the sheet. Once again, just to show you, we've now got this sheet instead of that sheet. Now we're just going to go ahead and change the names, which is literally, it's the same query. We just have to change it around to instead get the month to get the salesperson name. But I'm not going to copy the query. It's, it's so simple, but you know, repetition is the mother of knowledge or, or something like that. So I'm going to close this and we're going to do it all over again. So I need another query from table range. This time I want the salesperson name. I want to remove the other columns. Click on the cell, right click and drill down. Now this one, I can call it salesperson parameter, but that's a long name. So I'll do uh, person parameter. And I'm going to copy it. And now I press enter so that it, it sticks. Come back to this query. Now we have two parameters. We have the month parameter, the person parameter. We go to sales. And here, instead of Rachel Valdez, you know what we're going to do. We're going to just put the person parameter. Now I press enter, and of course nothing's going to change because we have Rachel. So now I close this, and I can go ahead and keep the changes. 
So let me see. Who else do we have other than Rachel? We have Jillian Carson. So I'm going to copy Jillian. And I will paste her there. And I want Jillian for March. So we're changing all the parameters. And I'll just go over here and we just do refresh. And now we got Jillian Carson for March. So the users and even you, you don't have to go and change any of those parameters in Power Query. You just change them right here. You can have as many parameters as you want. You can even have, like I said earlier, you can have like the source file. And then here you would put C colon common or whatever path it would be. And then in that first source tab, uh, but wait, before I do that, let me just show you exactly what I mean. You would go to edit. And here, once you do the same steps, we would change this entire string to the actual path and the name of the file. So you could have a parameter over there. And the cool thing about this, if you think about it, I'm going to close this, is that you don't have to type in these parameters. You can use data validation. You can use formulas. You can use VLOOKUPs. You can use anything that you want because when you hit refresh all, the first thing that's going to happen, the math will resolve in the table. Then the parameters will go ahead and run. And then the last query for sales will run. So this is a great trick to have in your Power Query Toolkit. Keep that in your back pocket. And remember, when you don't have to hard code stuff. You can always use parameters. There is one last thing that I want to let you know because it is going to drive you crazy. And it's a fix. There's a bug. And I'll show you how to do this fix. And this fix you only have to do once. When you first run any query with any parameters, you're going to get an error. And it's going to say something to the effect of this combination of this query is invalid. Please rebuild the query or something like that. Well, Power Query is kind of lying to you. You don't have to rebuild anything. What you have to do is you have to change the security level and then it will work. So in order to change the security level, and you only have to do this once, this is what you do. You're going to go ahead, you're going to open up Power Query. You want to go to the Query Editor. In the Query Editor, you go to File. You go to Options and Settings. You go to Query Options. In the Query Options, whenever it decides to show up, in Global, you go to This Security. Uh, I'm sorry, not security. You go to the privacy. You go to this privacy in global, not this privacy for the current workbook, the, the first one at the top. And you want to always ignore privacy level settings. You click on OK. And now when you run your queries, any query that you build with a parameter, it will work as expected. Like I didn't get that error because I already had that as always ignore. And that's the last trick. I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one.